Hi, I'm Donna Kalner. In this video, we're going to talk about designing your own projects. Design is really nothing more mysterious than making choices. Even if you don't think about it consciously, you make design choices all the time. When you combine your intentions with your tastes and materials, you're designing. Design elements include line, shape, form, texture, color, and value. Design principles are ways we organize and arrange those design elements. Design principles include pattern, contrast, variety, proportion, repetition, and balance. Other intentions get pulled into the mix as well. How do you want to use the piece? What materials are available? What colors are in your fiber stash already? Which leads us to this sample project made with cross-knit looping techniques. I wanted to make a sheath to cover my aluminum water bottle, which is scratched and dented from use. I wanted to include cross-knit looping, but for this to be a fairly quick project, so I decided to incorporate felt instead of stitching the whole thing. Actually, it's not felt. It's recycled fabric from a camel hair coat I got at a thrift shop for a natural dye workshop I taught. A lot of the yarns I'm using in demonstrations for the cross-knit looping e-course are naturally dyed and I like the harmony and contrast between the darker color of this felt and the lighter color of a wool yarn naturally dyed with willow bark. Some people might think all this brown is dull, but I love the rich, complex tones and shades you can get with natural dyes. So color is one of the design elements I chose to guide decisions in this project. The other design element I chose to feature is line. There's a strong vertical line where I used a cross-knit looping variation over the seam in the felt. The linear quality of cross-knit looping adds a pattern of finer lines at the top of the piece. And strong horizontal lines at the bottom, the top, and where the cross-knit collar meets the fabric add some rhythm to the piece. Your design choices in a looping project don't have to be carved in stone. You can change your mind and adapt a design as you go, but it helps to have a plan that incorporates design to get started. Here's how this project came together. I cut the dyed camel hair fabric into a rectangle and a circle slightly larger than the diameter of the bottle's base. After stitching the rectangle into a tube, I covered the seam with a variation on the cross-knit looping edging. This variation is worked in a continuous spiral with a hidden lag where the thread runs back to begin a new row. But since it's not on the edge, the hidden lag floats on the back side. We'll just call it faux edging. In that faux edging, I allocated a little extra space between the cross-knit stitches to emphasize the vertical lines. To attach the felt circle for the base to the body of the sheath, once again I used the cross-knit looping edging. Around the rim of the felt tube, I worked a row of buttonhole stitches to 
act as a base row for a section of cross-knit looping worked in a continuous spiral. At the rim of that section, I worked the cross-knit edging. I repeated that horizontal line element at the joint between the cross-knit section and the felt tube. Like the vertical element earlier, in this faux edging, the hidden lags float on the back. That line of faux edging also gave me an opportunity to build in an attachment loop for a small carabiner so I can clip my keys to my water bottle or clip the bottle to my day pack. Instead of joining the last row of the faux edging to the first row, I added a couple of stitches and started working in a continuous spiral without a hidden lag to form a small tube. When the tube was long enough for me to make a loop I could click into, I decreased a couple of stitches, went back to floating a hidden lag, and then mated the last row of the faux edging with the first row. At this point, I was mostly happy with the design except for one thing. The horizontal line element at the base didn't quite balance the visual weight of the sheath above it. So I worked another section of faux edging adjacent to the edging where the base attached to the sheath. It looks like it's all one unit, but actually it's two separate units that are just right next to each other. And that added the visual weight to the bottom that I needed to give this piece balance. And with that, this project was complete. So that's a look at the design process for one of my cross-knit looping projects. Have fun playing with ideas for projects of your own. Make some simple sketches or jot down a few notes. Pick one or two design elements or principles to guide the choices you make as you begin a project, you can always change the plan. Above all, have fun. I'm Donna Kalner. I'll see you again soon.